BFC Live, the daily video and podcast series of Business of Cannabis. BFC Live highlights the company's brands, people, and trends driving the global cannabis sector. Learn more at businessofcannabis.ca. Our guest today is Dan Sutton. He is the CEO of Tantalus Labs. He is never shy to share his opinion or perspective, which he will do in this conversation, but also on an event on March 18th through Business of Cannabis. Dan Sutton. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Jake. Glad to be back. Uh, yeah, you don't really need an introduction, but you're the CEO of Tantus Labs. Um, you, we are, you are doing an event on March 18th. We are helping you do that. It's on our platform. Uh, and people can register on our website, and we'll send out how to do that um, as this goes. Um, but you had posted, I don't know, at the beginning of February. You've been in this industry. I think it was nine years. People want to ask you questions. They do ask you questions all the time. What if we put together a forum where people can ask you those questions? What kinds of questions are people asking you? Oh man, I mean, you know, I've I've made a brand for myself and in a way for Tantalus of being very online and being very available. And I think it's kind of a generational thing. I'm an elder millennial. I'm a 34 year old at this time, so I think I do slot into those millennial categories. And social media has just been a part of our life. I was actually on Facebook when you still needed to have a university email address. I think in 2004 is when I got on it and that was the first year it was available in Canada and all that. I've been off Facebook for like 10 years now, you know, respect to Facebook, but it's not the best communication medium for the types of comms that I like to do. And so by being available on Twitter and, and other social media and Reddit and stuff like this, you know, people hit me up all the time. They're like, yo, what's up? Um, tell me about how to get into distributors, tell me about how to raise money, tell me about, you know, how to get your brand out there, tell me about all these, you know, various complexities of the Canadian cannabis industry. We've moved away a little bit from like regulatory compliance, how do I get, you know, a license, all that kind of stuff, as I think that's become a lot more streamlined from Health Canada. But I don't know, that's the thing about this that I think is going to be super interesting is let's just free ball it, open it up, see what people want to know. I'm, you know, completely unscripted. That's how I perform the best, as you know. And so we'll see, we'll see what the topics du jour are in cannabis in what will be March 2021. Yeah, well, it's it's funny because the, the what you just said, when we first connected, I honestly don't know when it was, it must have been 2019 at some point. Um, I asked you that question about sharing publicly things that you were doing at Tantalus through Twitter. Uh, I don't think it was proprietary stuff, but it was definitely very transparent. And that was actually one of the things we talked about. And you said the same thing. It's generational. It w- it's not so much, why do I do this? Why do I do this as a sort of public facing thing? It's like, it would be awkward if you weren't doing that. I guess this is sort of, ho- I'm paraphrasing what you said, but I actually, it goes to the sort of transparency of leadership of corporate, well, corporate, Canada or corporate America or corporate generally. And I'm not saying this, but it is like maybe not the extreme of like Elon Musk that moves markets, but there is this sense that there is like this younger set of, of CEOs and leaders that just talk about the things that matter to them. Uh, and I actually think, I think I'm going to butcher this guy's name, Dan Price. I think is his name is a CEO in California that you know, does it that made cut every, you know, nobody makes over whatever it was and, and it didn't fire anybody during COVID, like all those things and talks about it really publicly, how, you know, he pays his people and all that. Like, is that a good sign for where the world is going with the current wave of corporate leadership? I think it is. I mean, I've been inspired by people that have been really transparent with me through trials and tribulations, you know, at the outset of um, our, cultivation licensing process, we had a really instructive call with uh, Dr. Shane Morris, who really helped my QA team understand, like, you can push back on Health Canada, you can ask them to demonstrate risk. Uh, an even stronger example of that, even to this day, is Dieter McPherson. I guess I'm really pumping Aurora's tires and historic tires, but Dieter looks at two different classes of information sharing. He says there's IP and like, you know, we can't share IP, but basically everything else should not be a competitive advantage. QA compliance should not be a competitive advantage in the cannabis industry. And he has shared, you know, really transparently with, with our team and with other teams. And he's just always kind of a man about town to ask about whatever's on your mind in cannabis. So look, I mean, we're trying to advance this industry in a highly complex regulatory environment in a really strange 
financial environment where some firms have hundreds of millions of dollars of treasury and some firms, you know, can barely keep the lights on on a month to month basis. And I think if we're going to actually create a model that the, the international cannabis community can follow in Canada, that's definitely our aspiration from a business perspective. I think it's an aspiration from a regulatory perspective as well. We work better as a collective. We're going to be smarter. We're going to share things more effectively. We're going to advance the industry faster. And so I think it's, it's, it's not an act of charity. It's just a desire to say, let's figure out where our actual differentiation, differentiation and specialization is and everything that's not in that category. Let's get it out there in the service of making this industry awesome so that people can, you know, consume the best cannabis in the world in Canada, which I think is happening today. It's funny you said that some companies have treasury and some are keeping the lights on. The other part of that is that neither one of those two are requirements to creating great cannabis, right? And there may be, an, I don't think it's an inverse relation necessarily, but there is, there is no relationship between, you know, great quality cannabis and how much money you have in the bank. Am I wrong? Well, I think you're right. I mean, Tantalus Labs is lean startup mentality. We've stayed private through all of this stuff. We've never had a substantial treasury and it keeps us honest for sure. I mean, I think it keeps the team pretty laser focused. It's kind of like taking cold showers to save money on your hydro bills. But uh, we're, we're about that. And, and uh, you do not need a massive treasury to be able to succeed long term in this industry. And I think some of the most compelling and exciting firms do really rely on their month to month revenues to be able to keep going on, which means they, their, their shareholders are their most important financial contributors are their customers. If your customers are the most important part of your ecosystem, then you're going to work really hard to continue to satisfy those customers and excite them as they go forward. But that's the one question I won't be answering in the March 18th thing is, can you invest in us? I get that occasionally and I laugh because we have no money. I have no money. The only, Talents Lab, the only hope Talents Labs has is continuing to satisfy customers on a month to month basis. So unfortunately I can't help you with personal investing, but I might have some ideas as to where you might be able to find capital at this stage in the market. But don't, don't you think, I mean, we, we've talked about this before and people have used you an example, but also used the sort of big publicly traded companies or small publicly traded companies. Like, do you think, not that there's an end point or the next point, but like, does it make you a stronger business long-term to go the route that you guys have gone? Well, it's a good question. I mean, we're a pretty small business relative to, to a lot of our publicly traded peers who've been able to go and attack market share in a bit more of a lossy way. Um, so I'm of two minds on that always. Like, I think it would be nice to have more cash in hand so that we could really lean into the opportunities that we think are compelling. But at the same time, you know, we spend money like it's grandma's money. Like if we're going to get, a, you know, an automated label applicator, we're going to really do our due diligence. We're going to really focus in on that. Uh, it means our team is smaller. We don't have, you know, tons of hordes of people that are, are inefficient or are, you know, doing five hours worth of work a day instead of eight. Um, and so from that perspective, it's really great from, from the Tantalus Labs employee group because all of them know that they've earned their place. All of them know that it's a really special place to work. And, you know, we have 65 employees up and down our entire supply chain and territory managers across the country. And that's an elite group of people. It's a small, tight crew. And, and I think when you work at a cannabis company where you know that you're not just filling a seat, that you have a responsibility, it creates motivation in your day. It creates purpose. Like I got to pull my weight or you know, the people beside me are going to get let down. That's always a special place to work. So yeah. we're, we're stuck in it, you know, for the time being, who knows, maybe one day we will go public and try to raise a bunch of money to be able to go and, and spread our influence a bit wider. But for the time being, lean and mean, you know, keep it, keep it tight. That's, that's the way to build anything successfully over the long term. Well, there's not, you're not spending a ton of money on your office decor behind you. <laughs> this is the, the white wall. There's holes in it. I see that. Uh, it's a good show. It's very on brand right for this right now for the conversation we're having. Uh, one, um, one last thing. So I was looking back on sort of business of cannabis for 2020. And it was actually, I think it was this week last year that we actually connected as we were going into lockdown, you had posted 
you, you were advocating for the cannabis industry basically to be treated like everybody else, whether it be sort of from Farm Credit, Farm Credit Canada, I think it's called, or, or what have end, have ended up being like CERB and uh, the wage subsidy. And I think, aside from how retail is being treated, a whole variety of ways and weird ways, but like, what have you thought about or seen since then as the industry has been treated as it relates to sort of either COVID relief or just in general, like has it improved or is it not even an issue anymore? Well, first of all, I think the industry has a really strong track record in terms of COVID compliance. Like we're kind of lucky in cannabis because we have such high sanitation standards that adding in social distancing, masks, surface sanitization, all that kind of stuff was, was I think, pretty straightforward. Whereas other farming industries in BC, we've had problems in poultry farms and other greenhouses that may not have such a high sanitary standard. So I think, you know, cannabis is representing well for how to protect its employees from on-site transmission and those kinds of things. Uh, we have seen some positive forward momentum with Farm Credit Canada specifically and with other government financing groups that are saying, hey, you know, the cannabis industry is really in a fragile state. It's in its infancy here. And if we decimate, you know, the smaller firms that don't have access to the financial resources that they need in this uh, we, we have seen political traction on that front all the way up to the finance ministry and CRA and, and, and all these groups who have been flexible and functional for the cannabis industry, I, I think for sure. Now, the caveat to that, I think, is the large banks. You know, Tantalus Labs is now a longstanding, you mentioned I've been in the business for nine years. Well, we've been selling in cannabis for two years. You know, we have consistent financials. We're even deposited, all that kind of stuff. And we still just have a checking account. You know, like there's no, there's no lines of credit, there's no visa, there's no nothing. And I think that that's kind of a function of some of the larger banks getting involved with at sort of peak excitement, the larger LPs, and then not really seeing returns or security, valid security on those, on those deals. Um, and so still really tricky to get, I think, traditional business financing. We're working through that too. And we're talking to a lot of people all the time to see if we can get lines of credit or borrow against accounts receivables at not like exorbitant, you know, 18% interest rates. We, we'd rather just sort of be treated like a normal business. So I think we're still in the early days of, of cannabis credibility or acceptance from a financial perspective. And what it's really gonna take is a handful of small to medium enterprises in cannabis actually making money, actually delivering returns and actually being able to service their, their debt packages. And Tamil Slabs hopes to be at the front of that pack. We're, we're very financially responsible to the point of being financially kind of boring. And being financially kind of boring is exactly what you want to do to be involved with Canadian banks. Yes, well, just like the wall behind you, financially boring. Uh, Dan, I appreciate always appreciate the time. I'm looking forward to connecting with you on the 18th. Anybody who wants to come ask questions of Dan just like this, but probably better and more thoughtful than I could, <laughs> you'll do it. We'll do it through the Hopin platform. It's going to be great. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your openness all the time. And we look forward to seeing you on the 18th. And everybody can sign up on our website, businessofcannabis.ca slash events. Really appreciate it, Jay. Come on down, bring your ideas, bring your thoughts, bring your questions. If you want to troll me, that's fine, but it better be funny. If it's not funny, then you're going to get trolled back. No, like, no, like simple ball jokes. Like it's going to be funnier than that. Dude, the ball jokes are awful. Like, come on. Chicks dig bald guys. Guys dig bald guys. Bald is beautiful. Look at this mug. Look at I, all I know. this. It's good. It's good. I'm like going the way opposite direction. I'm not going, I'm not cutting anything until my barber can reopen, which I think is going to be another couple of weeks. Maybe, maybe before the 18th, but unlikely in Toronto. So we'll see. Let it ride, dude. It looks great. Does it? You may be the only one who says that. Uh, Dan Sutton, thank you so much. We'll check in with you down the road. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on B of C Live today. We're able to do what we do thanks to our ongoing partners, including Cannabis at Work, Cannabis Benchmarks, Can Delta, Headset, Gallagher, and Torque and Mains.